Welcome to the Makeup and Beauty Podcast, where we talk about all things makeup and beauty with a dash of fashion and pop culture. I'm your host, C. Michelle, and let's jump right into it. Tis the week of Christmas, and I hope you are having an amazing holiday with your family and friends. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. And also thank you to everyone who has rated this podcast and left a review. Thank you for helping the podcast grow and be seen. I am asking as my Christmas gift, as your gift to me, just to please share this with someone you know who you think would enjoy this podcast. Okay, so let's get into the first segment on the Makeup and Beauty podcast called What's New? So there's some huge news in fashion right now. Chanel, the Chanel, the Hawk Couture House has announced on Wednesday that they have a new CEO named Nair. She is of British Indian descent and she will be the first woman chief and one of the few women of color in the industry's exclusive leadership ranks. Wow. How awesome is that? And it says that when she was at Unilever, she focused highly on diversity and inclusion. So I'm excited to see how Chanel's brand will expand. There's a makeup artist that I follow on Instagram. Her name is Tasha Rico. She is amazing. And she is one of the first black makeup artists that Chanel is sponsoring. So let's see with the new CEO, how they incorporate more diversity and inclusion. Are they going to have more PLC artists that they sponsor? Are they going to expand their shade ranges quite a bit? I'm excited to see what they do and how they move forward from here on out. Lastly, if you are into makeup and beauty like I am and just want to learn about it, Every day, all day, there is a new documentary on the BBC called Makeup, A Glamorous History. It is led by Lisa Eldridge, and I believe it is a three-part series. I am going to be watching that over the holiday break. All right, let's get into the product of the week. I am a lip girl, and I love my lip products. So today is, of course a lip product. I have been loving my lip liner in the color Scorpio by Juvia's Place. It is such a rich and creamy lip liner. So here's a little bit about it. It is a Juvia's Place Luxe Lip Liner. It's a long wearing pencil that glides seamlessly to define and fill in the lips. It is perfect for use with Juvia's Place velvety matte lipsticks and lip reflect gloss. So Scorpio is described as a darkened plum. So I would definitely say it's that with like a burgundy-ish undertone. I love this lip liner. It is 100% like it says, it's long wearing. And I would like to add that it is extremely creamy and easy to apply on the lips. Even if the lips aren't that moisturized, I mean, it just does what it needs to do. So as I'm on the website, of course, it's on sale, tempting me to buy it. So it's originally $10. I got mine at Ulta, but it's on sale right now for $5. And they have other colors that I want to try, like Cola. That's described as a chocolatey brown. And they have other colors that I want to try. And they're $5 right now. And it seems like that might be an early Christmas gift to myself. But if you want to see how this liner looks on the lips, check out my Pinterest. I have a tutorial using this lip liner and I simply just lined my lips with it and left a little bit of the center of my lip open and put a clear gloss on top. And it is a look I will link to my Pinterest below. You can check that out and give me a follow over there. Okay, that is my product of the week. And let's get into my year end favorites as a makeup artist that's in my kit. (music) 
Okay, so this is quite the list. I am going to go in order of how I would do makeup on the face. And what I'm not going to do in this episode is get really deep into ingredients or read you the description from their website. I am just going to go through the list telling you why I love it and how it works for me. So jumping right into skin, every makeup artist knows that skin has to be prepped, honey. It has to be prepped to perfection. If that skin is not prepped, that makeup will not lay right. It will not have longevity and staying power and it is just a mess. So let's start with cleansing the skin. For example, if they have some leftover eye makeup on or some type of residue that you can visibly see on the skin, or if you just want to make sure that you have a clean palette to work with, I like to use the Bioderma Sensa Bio H2O. It's for sensitive skin. So for that, I feel like I can use it on everybody. But let me preface this. As makeup artists, the first thing you do, of course, is ask those probing questions, making sure that you can actually use this product on their skin. They may have specific skincare. They might have just washed their face. So make sure you just ask those questions first before you just start applying things on their skin. So after I ask my probing questions, then yes, I would follow up with the Bioderma or if they have just cleansed their skin and they have not added a moisturizer, I would move to that. So the Bioderma is a really sensitive, really good cleanser for the skin. Um, You can just rub it on their skin with a facial cotton and then move on to the next step, as I was mentioning the moisturizer. So this moisturizer I was using this year is by La Mer. Yep, I use the moisturizing cream by La Mer on most clients, especially if they were not oily. If they were oily, I use something else, but the La Mer creme is awesome. It has a lot of properties in there for smoothing. A lot of makeup artists love the Embrelease. I might revisit that for next year, but this year I really liked the La Mer. It's super great for dry skin for the creme. Um, they do have a gel form also for the oily skin types, but I like La Mer. It worked great for my clients this year. Now, following up, if I do have an oily client, what I would use is by Max Prep and Prime, and it's called Skin Refine Zone Treatment. I love this stuff. This has been a reoccurring purchase in my makeup kit for years. I love this stuff. It's great to place on the skin in those areas where you see shine. Any area where you want to mattify a client down, use this product. And don't forget, everything will be in the show notes below. So if you are interested, check that out. And if you have any products that you have heard me mention, or if you want to share with me your favorites for your makeup kit, or just for you personally, send me an email at podcast at seamashillestyles.com, or you can reach out to me on Twitter or Instagram or Pinterest, all at Styles. Going back to the Skin Refined Zone, this is a must. I have purchased this probably about a million times. I can't go without this product. It really mattifies the skin and helps keep that shine down. Okay, so our skin is prepped. We're moisturized. We're mattified. What do you do next? Now, for me personally, I move to the eyes. I like to do the eyes first because in case of any fallout, I can simply just wipe it away and don't have to risk ruining the foundation, concealer, or anything like that. So I move to the eyes and a base that is an OG item that I will use probably forever and ever is by MAC and it is their Pro Longwear Paint Pots. I have one in Soft Ochre and they have other colors for various skin tones like Lay and Low would be for someone of a deeper complexion. But again, like I said, they have a plethora of colors to choose from and they actually just increased their shade range with other colors this year. But I'm just gonna talk about Soft Ochre today. I love Soft Ochre. It's a pretty good universal eyeshadow base. Now, mind you, you can just wear this as a shadow on its own. You can probably cut a crease with this. You can do so much with it, but I love it to really make those eyeshadows pop. It's a creamy color. I just put a little on a spatula, warm it up on the back of my hand, and put it on the client's eye using a synthetic brush. 
but I love this paint pot and I will use this for as long as I can. As long as they make them, I'm going to use it. So I have a plethora of eyeshadows that I like to use on my clients, but if we're talking about my favorites of this year, I would have to give it to Natasha Denona and her bronze palette. This is such a good universal neutral palette that you can use on anyone. They have great transition shade colors for pretty much every skin tone. They have shimmers, they have satins, they have mattes in this palette. It's a great palette to have. It has more of a, I think this is a duochrome color in there also. It's one of those and I stand. I love this palette. It has worked on a plethora of skin tones on many different clients and the packaging is beautiful. It's a sturdy packaging so I don't have to worry about it being broken if I'm moving quickly and I just throw it into my kit. This is good stuff. I did purchase this one on sale um, here recently this year. So check Sephora or just her website for a good sale on this palette. I think I got it for half off, which is a steal for the quality and the pigmentation of these eyeshadows. But let me know what are your favorite eyeshadows for your makeup kit or just for yourself. Again, email me at podcast at seamstyles.com or you can slide into my DMs on Instagram. My handle is Seamstyle Styles on Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. So after our eyeshadow is laid and blended to perfection, what do we do next? Maybe liner eye? So I have two liners that I absolutely loved this year. One is by Maybelline, and that is the Lasting Drama in the Blackest Black. I went on a quest trying to find the best eyeliner, liquid eyeliner that I could find. And I found the Maybelline to be the best. I mean, I tried a plethora of brands including high-end brands, and the Maybelline just really does it for me. It doesn't bleed, it lasts long, it gives you that staying power for your client that you need. I love that eyeliner. Check it out at your local drugstore or Target or Walmart. It's a great product to add to your kit and it's reasonably priced. Another eyeliner that I have been loving this year is by NARS and it's called Via Veneto. NARS has recently gone through some name changes. I don't know if it's rebranding or changing of the packaging, but I think they renamed Via Veneto to something different, but it's a beautiful metallic -y brown that looks so beautiful underneath the eyes, like in the waterline, or just to smoke out the bottom lash line. It's a stunning color. So I have to look and see if they actually still have named it that, but I hope they have kept it because it is a stunning color. I'm sorry, it's called Via Apia. That's the brown. Okay, so after doing a little research, it seems as if they have renamed Via Apia to Maholland Drive. So if you're on NARS.com looking for it, I will have it linked below in, in the show notes, but it's now called Mulholland Drive. But I hope it's the same formula. Again, I haven't tried it as Mulholland Drive, but I'm going to because of course I need another and I want it to be the same formula, the same color, but we'll see. But that was my favorite. Those two were my favorite eyeliners for this year. So our eyeliner's on, our shadow was blended. Let's add some lashes. Ardell makes some of the best lashes and it is their Faux Minx, luxuriously lightweight with a not free Invisiband is what it's called, in the number 811. These are going to be in the middle of natural and a hint of drama. It's not at all going to be over the top, but if you have a client that loves a good lash, Try the Ardell 811 Faux Minx. They are worth the price. You can probably find them at Target on sale. Try them. They're great. Okay, so the client is getting used to the lash. They are adjusting to it. And I like to do it in the beginning so the client can get adjusted to the lashes, especially if they've never really worn them before. Now we're moving to the skin, which is probably my third favorite thing. The eyes are first, the lips are second, and then the skin. 
as far as my favorites go. So let's move into my favorite foundation this year. And it is by Becca Cosmetics that is no longer in business. Of course, it's no longer in business. I searched high and low to find what's left of this foundation that I could. And it is called the Becca Skin Love Foundation. It's not quite matte, it's not quite dewy, it's satin, it's right in the middle. You can really manipulate it to have it do what it's gonna do. But I love this foundation. I had it in every shade. I think it was 24 shades and I had it in every single one of them. And it is my favorite of this year. The way it applied to the skin was like magic and I am hurt, I am hurt, hurt that I cannot find it anymore. I had it in my view set palette, like organized and labeled and just ready to go. And once it's gone, it's gone. Once I use it up, it's done. And I'll have to go and find another favorite. But if you can suggest to me some other foundations that you guys love on Instagram, Twitter, or Pinterest at C. Michelle Styles, or you can send me an email at podcast at cmichellestyles.com. All right, so after we laid the foundation down, the skin is looking beautiful. Let's move into, I don't really have a favorite concealer of this year, but say we've already added the concealer, that part is done. Let's go into a powder. The powder that I really liked this year is by RCMA and it's called the No Color Powder. Now, when I saw this powder, one is $10. So I was shocked by the price. I'm like, ah, let's just give it a try. It's 10 bucks. I got it at the makeup show LA a few years back. I'm like, let's give it a go, right? When I actually did try it on a deep complexion, it really melted into the skin. Like it did not have a white cast. It did not have flashback. I said, what is this magic? Okay, what is this magic in a bottle? Give it to me. This powder is great. It's great for mattifying, setting, doing all of that. Again, it shocked me by actually being no color and did not show up on really deep complexions. It did what it said it was gonna do and I loved that. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention in order would be a primer and I really don't use primers anymore. I don't really bother with them. I don't necessarily think they're necessary to be honest with you. Uh, Primers are benefit when maybe someone has very visible pores. If I had to pick something, it would be the Professional by Benefit. I would just lightly tap that into the pore area and that's it. It's not something that I would use like all over the skin. I think over the years, we've all as a community just kind of grown out of the whole primer thing. Like, you know, if you still use them, that's fantastic. But I am kind of off the whole primer movement. All right, so let's move into brows. So if you haven't heard the podcast that I did with a girlfriend of mine named Brittany Ingram, go check that out. And she mentioned one of her favorite items in her kit were brows. And I have to agree with her. My favorite brow items this year were just my clear brow gel by MAC and my spiked pencil by MAC. Two staples, you can never go wrong with them. A clear brow gel to hold those brows down in place. Let it sit for a minute and then fill it in with your brow pencil. Yes, I do it the opposite. I gel them down first and then I fill them in. I like for them to be laid properly first. See how I need to fill them in. And I feel like the best way to do that is by using the gelling product first. But yeah, those two are my favorite products for brows. All right, so we have done the whole step for the face. Everything's done. Now let's set the face, right? Let's kind of mat and gel all this stuff together. And how do we do that? We do that using the MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus. That's my jam. That is my jam. I love that product. Now some love Final Seal. I like Final Seal also, but I pick and choose when I use Final Seal. I feel like that's more of a wedding item or a camera item or someone who's super oily. I don't use that all the time, but I always throughout my process, whether I do Fix Plus in the middle and then end with Final Seal, I always use my Fix Plus. It will be a staple in my kit until they stop making it, period. Okay, so I forgot to mention 
before we spray our face down, okay? Let's add a bronzer. So the bronzer that I was loving this year is by Marc Jacobs, and it's called the Omega Bronzer. I think this is another discontinued item, or I think they are rebranding or something because this was on sale when I purchased it, and it is huge. It is a huge pan, and it's pretty universal. So it has a warm undertone, and I could use this on a plethora of skin tones without it looking muddy. You know how some bronzers just look super muddy because it's so cool toned. This is warm and it's a beautiful lightweight bronzer that just looks like you have a natural bronze to you. Like I love it. Okay. And then from there we would set and set and set and spray honey and do the fix plus and just yes. All right. Now on to my favorite part would be the lips. I love my lip base. And I mentioned this in my 10 winter beauty staples and that is by Fresh. That is the Sugar Lip Wonder Drops by Fresh. This acts as a retexturing and smoothing gel. If you have to have a primer of some sort, this will be your primer exfoliator all in one. You simply just put this on the lips, let it dry, and then go in with your liner. This is a must have. Once I found out about this product and tried it, it was something that I immediately bought for my kit. I said, yeah, this is a kit product, gotta have it. From there, I would line the lips with, well, a plethora of colors, but my two favorite this year have been Max Chestnut, adore that color. I like the chestnut because of the dimension that it gives you. It gives you extra pouty look to the lip. I love it. And another one is by NARS called Morocco. It is such a beautiful nude color. I love that lip liner. Two staples in my kit, gotta have them. I'll have them as long as they make them. Next would be so say for instance, you have a client and you've noticed that their lips need a little bit of love first. So after you use your retexturing gel by Fresh, and you just wanna moisturize their lips while you're doing the other steps to their makeup process, I would use the LYS Speak Love Glossy Lip Treatment Oil. This stuff is amazing. This is a black owned brand. It's $12 and you cannot beat it. It really penetrates the lips, makes them supple. It's a great duo with the fresh Sugar Lip Wonder Drops, unless you're using um, another lip product that I will mention next by Lawless, which is a lip filler plumper situation and it's great. But say for instance, they don't want that tingle, they don't need all of that. The Speak Love Gloss is a must have and it's actually a beautiful pink tinted color. So say for instance, if you just wanted to line their lips with the two, with one of the two that I mentioned and add this on top, you're getting a bonus because you're getting the gloss and you're getting the treatment oil. So it's a win-win. Alrighty, and we are down to the last bit. We are moving to the tools that I loved this year. Just have three. One is my view set palettes. Viewset is the goat when it comes to helping you condense your kit and making it convenient. Viewset has this, I think it's called the Tahiti palette. And that's what I put my Becca Skin Love foundations in. And I love it. It's convenient. It's compact. It's sturdy. It's, it's, it's great. It's a great palette. And I have a few Viewset palettes. They're not cheap, but they are worth the investment. Another product that I loved this year that just kind of added a luxury component to my service is the Shiseido Facial Cotton. Okay, so as I mentioned in the beginning, okay, daydream with me. Okay, so you take a little bit of your Bioderma, you put it on your facial cotton that is so soft, so luxurious looking. It will feel like they're at a spa. It is made so well and it feels really good on the skin. If you're lucky, you can find the facial cotton at TJ Maxx in a plethora of sizes. They have the small one, which is like three bucks, and they have the bigger one that might be about $8. Worth the investment and it won't feel like little gritty sand rocks are on their face when you're trying to rub this bioderma in their skin, especially if you're heavy handed. It's just a nice, soft, 
added luxury component to your kit. And last but not least, it would be blending brushes. I love blending brushes, but one specifically that I have been loving is by Refer. It's the number 16 brush. And if you're looking for a brush that would give you that perfect placement for your cheekbone highlight, look into that brush. Look into that brush because it does it for me. It truly does. Okay, that is the end of my year end favorites as a makeup artist. I hope this was very helpful for you. I hope you resonate with some of the products that I use in my kit, or maybe you can add some to yours or, you know, get some inspiration. I thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. Before you go listen to other episodes, make sure that you give this podcast a good rating. And if you could leave a review, that would be super helpful. Make sure you share this with someone that is a makeup artist or is a new makeup artist and needs some tips for their makeup kit or an experience. Experience. We can always learn, but make sure you subscribe to this podcast before you go. If you're on Apple or if you're on Spotify or another platform, you hit the follow button and the bell button. Last but not least, make sure you check out everything in the show notes below for links to everything that I mentioned in today's podcast. Give me a follow over on Instagram at cmichellestyles. I just signed up for TikTok too, you guys. So on TikTok, Pinterest, Twitter, shoot, what else is it? It's a million of them. Just look for C. Michelle Styles. I'm pretty much on everything now. And you can reach out to me there or email me at podcast at cmichellestyles.com and we can chat about makeup. I hope you have an amazing holiday with your family and friends. And thank you so much for joining me for beauty and community. Until next time, adios, besos.